Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared to avoid here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Bell D-188A. Unofficially military designations XF-109 slash XF-3L. Was proposed 8 engine Mach 2 capable vertical takeoff and landing VTOL. Tilt jet fighter that never proceeded past the mock-up stage. In 1955, Bell Aircraft was requested by both the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy to develop a VTOL slash STOL uh, supersonic all-weather fighter bomber and defense interceptor. The project was highly ambitious and was designed to fulfill a multitude of roles for two different services. The aircraft was designated the Model 2000 and was off offered in two different versions, the D-188 for the Navy and the D-188A for the Air Force. Bell had rather optimi optimistically called the Navy version the xf 3L-1 and the Air Force version is the XF-109, although neither of these designations were official. In 1959, Bell teamed with Convair to form a joint weapon systems management team in order to push the XF-109 program. On December 5, 1960, Bell publicly, publicly showed off the design as the XF-109, the Air Force version as the Navy had lost interest the year earlier. However, in the spring of 1961, the U.S. Air Force canceled the program with n and no examples were built. So yeah, a uh, pretty interesting aircraft to just say the very least. It was a uh, really fast jet uh, for what it was designed to be and interesting design to say the very least. Uh, as I said, this was designed to be a VTOL type aircraft and there were no mock-ups, so there was actually no models of this thing actually built. It's just kind of a completely concept um, Kind of aircraft i do believe actually there were like mock-ups in terms of like not the actual aircraft itself kind of mocked up uh so like models like large-scale models but there weren't actually any like flying or flight capable ones that were made um so yeah pretty interesting aircraft here and a kind of really long pencil like aircraft um but it's interesting very interesting fighter indeed um, before we go and jump into the, to the tutorial, I do want to give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you guys already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and put a small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, earn a view core request you're choosing. Really helps support the work I do on my channel and is very greatly appreciated. So again, you can feel free to check that out. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and take a look here at this uh, aircraft. Obviously, we do have the, both the landed and in-flight versions, and both versions have the different configurations for the engines. So as you can see here, we do have the engines in the kind of uh, up position, so being able to vertically take off and uh, land. And then we also have the engines forward for uh, basically flying forward. Um, going ahead and covering the aircraft, you can see it's pretty streamlined, pretty thin um, type design here. This is the Navy version, so it does have the white underbelly, uh, the white kind of stabilizers and stuff like that very kind of reminiscent of what the Navy uh, design was or color scheme they were going with for aircraft here in this era. But pretty nice stuff. Uh, we have the cockpit obviously and the National Star Antony on the side there. We have our engines here obviously and this is the landed version. So you can see we have the landing gear available as well. Uh, continuing on we have the some of the kind of stabilizers here on the back and also the two in gen engines that the aircraft does have on the rear as well. And uh, on the sides here also we do have the intakes like that and for the in-flight version you can see a little bit more clear what it looks like overall but definitely a pretty interesting aircraft uh, could be a really nice one to add to your uh, you know possible Cold War type scenarios or you know something like that and or just a nice museum piece really um, this aircraft would fit nicely in so pretty interesting project uh, pretty nice pretty interesting aircraft and one of our more unique ones for sure anyways let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer all right guys so going ahead and moving on to our uh, first layer here we have layer number two for layer two to go ahead and get started with one thing I want to mention before we do is I do want to mention that if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials the way like structure tutorials I like to do half on camera half off what this means is we'll be building the entire center line of the aircraft and then everything on the right side and they'll be up to you guys in between layers of copy what we do on the right side over to the left side it's pretty straightforward and once we kind of get for the first few layers it's going to make a little bit more sense exactly what we're doing uh but yeah that's kind of the way we're going to be structuring this also the landing gear will be added on at the end so we're going to be building this as if the aircraft is in flight um and then using go into the end of the video and there will be a modification to show you guys how to put the landing gear on the aircraft 
as well as we will not be building the engines on the aircraft yet we'll be saving that at the end for when you can go ahead and put them in the two configurations either facing upright or facing to the forward um, sideways so again those will be kind of modifications we're just be focusing solely on the fuselage for these layer parts one thing i do want to mention though is if you do plan on building this aircraft landed we do need to make sure we build this a certain height off the ground layer two here sits basically exactly two blocks up from the ground level. As you can see, we have two blo full blocks of space between the ground and our bottom of our fuselage here. So very important to make sure that's correct because obviously the aircraft will not sit properly if you do want to do a landing. If you're building this in flight, it doesn't really matter. Just build it um, however high you want. Just make sure you take into consideration the height and make sure the height limit is not going to interfere with that. Let's go ahead and get started here. First thing we want to do is we're going to place down a quartz full block. Going forward from it, we're going to place down two quartz top slabs and then an iron trap door coming off that top slab like so for the front. Going back from this quartz full block here, we're going to place down a long row of quartz full blocks. That's going to go all the way back for a total of 29 back from that quartz block, so making a total of 30 back from that top slab. After that, we're going to then place down two smooth quartz top slabs on the end here, and then an iron trap door like that to go and finish that off. After that, going back up to the front, we're going to take our white stained glass panes. We're going to place down two panes here next to those two blocks. We then want to take our quartz stairs and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, uh, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Quartz upside down stairs. I'm just going to go double check my count here to make sure it's correct. And it is going to be 25 stairs in total. We want to go and then place down a row of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Quartz top slabs. And then 1 and 2 iron trap doors back. We're going to go and then go to this last quartz top slab. We're going to place down 1 top slab out to the side. And then 1, 2, forward. So you have a row of 3. Go into the center top slab, we're going to place down one more to the side, then back one, two. Then we want to go ahead and go and place down one, two quartz top slabs. Then one top slab come off this one, and then back one, and then one out to the side. So you get something that looks just like that. After that's all complete, we want to go and then uh, go forward one, two, three, four, five, six. Spaces four from that quartz top slab, we're going to place down two iron trap doors, two polished anti top slabs, and then we want to go and then delete those. Um, blocks basically that space in between there just like that and after that's all done there that's going to basically wrap up what we have there for uh layer number one or layer number two sorry taking a look at it from above this is what it should look like with this layer complete anyways with that done uh go ahead and take what we down the right side flip it over the left side and with that we're going to go and drop down to layer number one all right guys going ahead and moving into our next layer we have layer number one for layer one to go ahead and get started with here we're going to go to our quartz full blocks we're going to count back one two three four and our fifth quartz full block on the bottom here we're going to place down an iron trap door on the bottom we then want to go ahead and go back for our iron trap doors all the way to the back here in total 23 so back from that first one we're going to go 23 iron trap doors back and we should end on our third from last quartz full block down the center line after that's done we're going to go and then grab ourselves a quartz top slab we're going to go to the last iron trap door here we're going to place a top slab to the side followed by one more back we then want to go ahead and also grab ourselves skeleton schools and on the side of this slab here we're going to place down a skeleton school we're going to place down one slab forward a skeleton school to the side there and we're going to then place down there two top slabs here and then two slabs that come down like that so it should look something like this here for those uh, little stabilizers there on the bottom and that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number one and obviously same thing will be done to both sides there for the bottom with that though that's it for layer one let's move on to layer number three all right guys moving into our next layer here we have layer number three for layer three to go ahead and get started with we're to place a polished black stone slab on top of this iron trap door going back from we're to place on a polished dancite stair three polished dancite full blocks back from the stair and then a row of five of black concrete or you can leave this row of five open if you do want to do a cockpit for the aircraft and either way we have this row of five of blocks after that, we're going to go ahead and take our polished dance site. We're going to go ahead and place down a row going all the way to the back here in total 24 blocks long. So back from that row of 5 of black concrete or open space, we're going to have 24 polished dance site blocks back. We're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block here on top of this last quartz top slab, a polished dance site block, a iron or a andesite wall, and then an iron trap door coming off the andesite wall like so. After that, going ahead and going back up to the front here and place down a skeleton school to the side of this polished dance site stair. Two light gray stainless panes back two andesite walls back, a core ore block, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26 uh, polished andesite blocks back, followed by a black concrete block like so. 
After that, we're going to place down an iron trapdoor here on top of this one, and then a second iron trapdoor like this going out to the side here. After we have that done, we're going to then grab ourselves a debug stick, so we can use our give command to give ourselves a debug stick. If you do not have access to a debug stick, you can very simply use um, bir birchwood trapdoors for this uh, feature here on the back. Uh, but using the debug stick, we can go ahead and then select the debug stick and select these to open, like so. And also on the bottom here, coming off these two iron trap doors, we're also going to go ahead and take those back one more, like that on both sides there, um, on the bottom. And with that done, uh, that right there is going to finish that off. And then going ahead and continuing out to the sides here, we want to go ahead and grab our self with the item frame, a um, black or a dark oak wood sign, and a red concrete block. We're going to place down an item frame on the side of this second polished anti block, a red concrete block rotated in the item frame to kind of form a diamond, and then if you're on Java, a dark oak wood sign over the um, item frame. This is a feature you're only able to do on Java. If you are on Bedrock, then just go ahead and disregard the sign and just place down the item frame. Going ahead and continue now, we're going to take our light gray stainless panes. We're going to go ahead and go on the side 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 glass panes followed by two red stained glass panes, a black concrete block, one, two, three polished andesite blocks, two andesite walls, and then one, two, three, and four light gray stained glass panes. We then also want to take some acacia wood trapdoors and place down two trapdoors on the side of that black concrete block and also this polished andesite block like that on the side there. After that, uh, go into this section back here and place down one, two, and three iron trapdoors along the side here. And again, using our debug stick, we're going to make sure that we open the trapdoors like so along the side there. Again, you can use virtual trapdoors as an alternative for you guys if you do not have that feature to make, or the feed, the ability to make that work. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude layer three. Here's what it looks like from up above with that layer complete. And with that, we're going to go and move into our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to go ahead and begin with, we're going to place down a daylight detector on top of this polished anti block and turn the daylight detector to the night mode. We're going to go then place down a polished andesite slab back from it, then one, two, three, four, five black stained glass blocks, a black concrete block, and then we're going to go and place down a row of polished andesite. This in total is going to be a row of 25 polished andesite blocks back from that black concrete block there. We then want to go and place down a polished andesite slab here on the end, and then a iron trap door directly after that. Once we have that done there, going back up to the front, we're going to place down a skeleton skull on top of this andesite wall here at a very slight angle like so. Followed by two black stained glass panes back, two narrow brick walls, or sorry, three narrow brick walls, a brick stair, and then one, two, three, four, and five polished andesite stairs. So this actually, this first one here is going to be a stone stair, and then so we have a stone stair, and then four polished andesite stairs. We're going to then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven polished andesite full blocks, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight polished andesite slabs, or polished andesite stairs two polished andesite slabs, two daylight detectors turned to night mode, and two iron trap doors coming off those slabs going back, like so for the back there. Anyways, once that's done, go ahead and focus our attention here to the wings. We're going to go to this second polished andesite full block. We're going to place on a full block to the side, followed by two and three, so a row of three here, then followed by a stair, and then a slab like that going back. Alright guys, so after this point we have this slab right here, we're going to then place down additional two slabs back along the side here and then two iron trap doors like that to go and finish that off. After that, we want to go and then go to this section here, we're going to place down a polished andesite stair, coming off this full block here. Two full blocks back, polished andesite stair, polished andesite slab. We're going to go and do pretty much the same row again, so polished andesite stair, two full blocks back, polished andesite stair, this time however we're going to place down a stone slab. Next row here. We're going, to, we're going to place down two polished andesite top slabs coming off those two full blocks, followed by a stone top slab, and same row again just coming off to the side there, like so. And you're going to go and do the same thing on both sides there, and that's going to pretty much do it for your wings. Pretty uh, simple design there for them, and um, that will pretty much do it for that. So the last thing we have to worry about for this layer is the banners, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the materials we'll need. I'll show you guys how to make this National Star Insignia, and then I'll talk about the Navy writing there on the back tail of the aircraft. Anyways, uh, let me go ahead and grab the materials and I'll see you guys here in a sec to go ahead and make those banners. Alright guys, so to go ahead and make the National Star Insignia emblem, you can see there on the side of the aircraft, it's pretty simple. We're just going to need a white banner, two blue banners, um, a piece of red dye, and six light gray dye. Let's go ahead and go into our loom, and we're going to place our white banner in the loom first, and our red dye. We're going to go ahead and do the vertical, or the horizontal line, directly through the center of red dye. And we want to go ahead and then take our light gray dye and do the line across the top. 
and the line across the bottom there horizontally to go ahead and make this banner like so. Our next banners, our blue banners, we're going to go ahead and put into our loom. And for our first banner here, we're going to go ahead and select the bottom left hand corner square. And then we want to go ahead and select the top left hand corner square, like that, to go and form our first banner. And then our second banner here, we're going to be doing the same thing, just time on the right side. So the bottom right corner, and then the top left corner, just like that. And we create these banners that look like so. And the placement of these banners is super simple. We're just going to go ahead and go to this stone stair, place our striped banner, our two blue banners facing each other, so the blue is um, facing each other. And then a uh, white, or basically this banner here, a striped banner directly after it. It's not perfect because we do have the glass panes that do interfere with it, unfortunately, but that's just kind of part of the design. But at least we have something there, you can kind of see what we're trying to go for there in that situation. Now when it comes to the back here, we also have navy written on the side of the aircraft. Now this is something I'm not going to show in the tutorial how to do because, um, you know, obviously the letters here do take some time to do. There are plenty of tutorials on there that do show you, that are out there on YouTube and that you can use that will show you guys how to make the letter writing. Or if you've done some of my tutorials before in the past, I'm sure you guys actually already have that. But all we want is light gray banners with black writing and the N-A-V-Y. You have navy. And basically on the left side here, it's positioned here on this uh, third from last stair. N-A-V-Y. And then over here on the right side of the aircraft, we're going to start on the slab. N-A-V-Y. So um, that's pretty much really about it for the banners there and those will be going on both sides of the aircraft as you can see just like that. Anyways that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number four and with that we're going to probably move into our final layers here for the fuselage. Hey guys uh, before we go ahead and uh, wrap up this uh, layer here I want to go ahead and make one quick adjustment. Uh, this is actually sh the section here we should actually move this back one. Uh, so we're actually going to make an adjustment here. We're actually going to move this iron trap door back one and we're going to move these polished anti blocks or top sides back one so it should be something like this here on the side for the intake um, like that we don't want uh, those facing forward I noticed that mistake a little bit earlier in the vi or a little bit later in the video so let's go ahead and make that quick adjustment there on the intakes there and uh, we'll be pretty much good to go anyways that right there is going to finish that this layer off all right guys going ahead and moving into our final layers here we have layers five through eight for these layers to go ahead and get started with here we're going to go ahead and start off by taking a daylight detector we're going to place it down on top of the second light gray stainless or sorry black stainless block and we're going to go ahead and change the item frame to the night mode we're going to go ahead and place down two narrow brick slabs back from it, followed by a again two daylight detectors turned to night mode back from that. We then want to place down a row going down the spine of the aircraft of iron trap doors. In total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So 21 iron trap doors there in total, running along the side there, or running along the spine of the aircraft. After that, we're going to place down a polished anesthetic stair two polished anesthetic blocks, a stone block, and then a light gray stainless pane. Going ahead and going up, we're going to place down a polished anesthetic stair on top of this block here, two polished anesthetic blocks back, and then an air stone block. We're going to go ahead and place down an air polished anesthetic stair up, two coal ore blocks back, and a light gray stainless pane, and then on top of this coal ore block, we're going to place down a polished blackstone stair with two polished anesthetic blocks back from the blackstone stair. And with that all complete, uh, that right there is going to basically complete uh, the tail there, and uh, that will pretty much complete uh, the fuselage here for the build. At this point here, we're going to go and move into the different sections of the video, which will be covering the different uh, things you can add onto it, so the different configurations for the engines and also the landing gear. Uh, please take some time to look at the video description or look at the time encoder bar and skip ahead to wherever you need want to go. Uh, the engines will work for basically facing upwards or facing horizontally. Uh, so engines vertically or horizontally uh, for either version landed or in flight So that's kind of a cool feature about this build is you do have the playability for it um, So you can go and choose what kind of way you want the engines configured um, Landed more than likely you probably want them facing vertically and flying you probably more than likely want them facing Horizontally so again up to you guys But look at the time encoder bar or the video description to skip ahead where you need to go So we're gonna be working on those engines and the two configurations and then there'll be landing gear after that So with that let's go ahead and move into our vertical facing engines to begin Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our uh, vertical engines. So for vertical facing engines, I mean those ones right there, so they're going to be sticking straight up. For these, to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go to go to this section here and place down a row of three of polished anesthetic blocks here. And then another row of three across the top of those of that row of three. We then want to go ahead and grab our light gray stained glass panes, or to place down two light gray stained glass panes up. And go ahead and then grab our brick walls. We're going to go ahead and then grab our brick walls and then our red stained glass panes and we're going to place down a brick wall on both sides of the first 
one, first like racing with speed and then red sing with pain on both sides of the second one up on top here. Then we're going to just place down one more like racing with pain that goes up. After that, go ahead and go into the bottom here. We want to go ahead and place down two like racing with pains down, and then grab our andesite walls here. We're going to place down one and two andesite walls down on both ends. Now, once we get to this point, uh, we want to go and then grab our black concrete. So, we'll grab our black concrete, and we're going to go to the side here. We're going to go and place down a black concrete block on next to this wall here, and then we're going to go up one, two, three, up like that. And we want to go and then go to this wall here, and same thing, one, two, three, and four up. So you have row four there. And after we have that set up, in the middle here, we're just going to fill this in with polished andesite between those black concrete blocks. On the top here, we're going to go up one and two. Polished andesite blocks up, followed by a skeleton skull on both sides of this block, and then a skeleton skull on top there. After that, going ahead and going down here, uh, we want to go ahead and place down a polished andesite block here in the center, followed by an andesite wall that comes down like so. And we then want to go ahead and grab our iron trap doors. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five iron trap doors along the side. And going ahead and using our debug stick, we can go ahead and close these trap doors, or technically in this case, open them. So just like that. And again, the alternative is to use birchwood trap doors. And same thing on this side as well. So just like that. Once we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and then grab our leg gray stained glass. We're going to place down one, two, three panes going down the side here, followed by a brick wall on these two black concrete blocks, two red stained glass panes on both sides there, and there are two red stained glass panes down. And we then want to go ahead and place down one and two inside walls down on both sides, and then two leg gray stained glass panes here in the center, and then two inside walls down on both sides as well. And after that's all done, that's going to pretty much do it for your kind of vertically positioned uh, engines there. And uh, all you'll do is take that same design and copy it over to the air side, and you'll pretty much be good to go for those engines. Anyways, that's it for the vertically facing ones. Let's go ahead and move on to the horizontally facing engines. All right, guys, so go ahead and get started and work on our horizontally facing engines. For this to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go off these slabs and right here. We're going to place down a row three of stone ups and stairs. We then want to grab our light gray stainless paint and place down three more going forward. And then grabbing our andesite full blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six here along the side. We then want to place down a skeleton skull here on the tip. And we're going to go then grab ourselves iron trap doors. And we're going to place down an iron trap door on top of this block here and on the bottom, like so. Also along this side, we're going to place down our three light gray stainless panes. Working on the top side to begin with, we're going to place down a polished andesite slab here. We then want to go ahead and place down a block of coal, or sorry, just a black concrete block actually. So black concrete block, and then we're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, and four. And same thing on the bottom here, polished andesite top slab, one, two, three, and four, black concrete blocks back. We're going to go ahead and place down a brick wall on top of these two red, or on top of those two or next to that first black concrete block on both sides, and then a red stained glass pane come off the wall before we zoom forward. And same thing over here to these sides as well. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down two polished andesite blocks back from those walls on the side here. And we want to go and then grab andesite walls, and we're going to place down two andesite walls back from those polished andesite blocks. After that, we're going to place down two red stained glass panes there in the center, and then and there are two red, or and there are two uh, light gray stained glass panes back. A polished andesite block here in the middle, like we stained with paint to the side, and we're going to do the same thing over here. So our two polished andesite blocks back, two andesite walls, our two polished andesite blocks, and our two andesite walls back. So like down top and bottom. Then taking our iron trap doors, we're going to go, ahead and go to the top here and place in a row of one, two, three, four, and five iron trap doors going back. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom here, one, two, three, four, and five, like so. And on the very uh, Edge, or the very end here on the tip, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, just like that. And with that all complete there, we have our horizontally facing engines, just like that. And you have your vertically facing ones, so you have your two engines there. And you can pick and choose between those and which one you want to use for the build. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude our engines. And with that, we're going to go ahead and now move into our landing gear uh, to go ahead and complete the tutorial. 
Alright guys, going ahead and moving into our landing gear. To go ahead and get started with here, we're going to be going ahead and going to our fifth trapdoor back. So on the bottom here, we're going to place down a dire wall that comes down from this. We're going to delete that trapdoor as well. We're going to go then place down a quartz top set on the bottom here of the wall, followed by a block of coal to both sides. And then we want to go then place down this white banner, which is basically just a white banner, a black border around it, and a black line through the uh, middle horizontally. And this is just going to go ahead and go on the sides of the blocks of coal here to make them look a little bit more wheel-like. Uh, we then want to go ahead and delete this iron trap door and this one here and these two quartz blocks in their space like so. In the top here we're just going to go ahead and very simply place down a row of end rods like that in that section there. And then to the sides we want to take our quartz top steps we're going to place on the bottom of this stair then the following two stairs back from it. So just these quartz top steps here on both sides for the doors that would open up to expose the landing gear. And that right there is going to complete your front wheel and let's go ahead and move on to the rear ones. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our rear landing gear to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go ahead and go into this section here. Now we're going to delete these two iron trap doors and in their place we're going to place down two quartz stairs and then two quartz top slabs dropping from these last two stairs like so. Going ahead and go into this space here, we're going to delete these uh, three quartz uh, stairs right in that section like so. And once we get to this point here, we want to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull in this space, followed by an iron trap door and then a skeleton skull that drops down from the iron trap door. We're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves some polished andesite, or some polished blackstone stairs. We're going to place down two stairs like so, back to back, and then two stairs on the bottom there to go ahead and make that. And then to the side here, we're going to place down a polished andesite slab, uh, or sorry, top slab that leads up to a slab. And then in the middle here, we're going to place down a top slab like so. And after we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and then grab our uh, materials we'll need to make some banners to make this wheel a little bit more complete uh, but that right there is basically the main structure there for the land gear pretty straightforward stuff nothing too complex for that uh, but anyways I'm gonna grab the materials we'll need and I'll be back in a sec to go ahead and finish this wheel off alright guys so to make these banner wheels pretty straightforward we're just gonna go ahead and start off by placing down a loom and we want to go ahead and then place down a black banner in the loom white dye and black dye or white dye to begin with for each one of these uh, black banners here, we have our two black banners, two white dye, and our four black dye. We're going to place down a white line on the left side of the first banner and then a line vertically on the right side of the banner like so to create these two. And we want to go ahead and place down each banner back into the loom. Select the horizontal line across the bottom and across the top to go ahead and create these two banners here. And same thing over here for this banner, line across the top and line across the bottom. And we then want to go ahead and just take these black banners, we're going to put them on the sides of these two stairs like so. And right there will basically complete our wheel here. You're going to take the same design and flip it over to the other side. And you'll have your landing gear for the rear complete as well. Anyways though, that's going to do pretty much wrap up my tutorial here for the Bell um, 1-188A. Uh, hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do use this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This be the thing from the side of the build to make my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build you're free user for our project you guys are working on. Overall, uh... Big thanks again to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that, um, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.